this is not a happy camper oh my goodness oh my goodness look how look how oh my there's just some like really dead stuff back there holy freaking cow hello friends and welcome back to my channel <laughs> Um, also, hi, I have massively missed you all. I massively missed making videos. If you didn't know, I just got back from holiday. I was in India for three weeks. It's a really long time to be away from my plants and away from making content. You probably didn't miss me as much as I missed you because I like put loads of content out while I was away. If you haven't seen that, I did a whole houseplant tour. Go check that out, check out all of my plants all 200 and whatever of them. Also, if you haven't seen my India vlog montage thing, go check that out. I will link it in the clickable eye and you can see all of the fun stuff that we got up to in India. It was an absolute whirlwind of a trip. It was like simultaneously super long, but super fast. And by the end, I was definitely glad to be home, but I had a lot of fun and did some major exploring, which was super cool. It was my first time in Asia. So yeah, that was amazing. But now I am home after three weeks and I want to show you everything that's going on in my plant collection because there's some good stuff and some bad stuff and some pests. But yeah, there's a lot going on. Also, my plants were only cared for once while I was away. Claire the Jungle Haven came and had a look at them and made sure that they were watered. So there's definitely some dehydration going on. So without further ado, let us get into it. Except there is one further ado. <laughs> if you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make house plenty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my house plenty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. I missed you. <laughs> so yeah. Well, Let's get into it now, officially. Let, let's go, let's look. So actually the first thing I noticed when I came home was that I was missing a leaf on my philodendron melanoni, melanoni eye, um, my fat boy, not fat boy. It's like very obvious that it's missing a leaf right there. And I'm like, it used to be so much more covered there and it's not anymore. I think what happened was Cleo snapped it off while we were away and I saw that Claire chopped it when she came to take care of my plants. Um, she actually has a video of that over on her Patreon if you're subscribed to that and you wanna watch her take care of my plants for a couple days, you can do that. Yeah, so that was kind of sad for me because I think it was probably quite a big leaf. I think this one is bigger, but still, it, it looks like a bit empty there. I think this leaf came out while I was away, which is exciting. This one's huge as well. I don't know if it's hardened off either. So it feels a bit limper, but it is kind of behind loads of stuff. So hopefully it continues. It's got a fat stem. This is why I thought it was a fat boy. Like, look how fat that stem is. Like, it's so much thicker than the one before it. So I don't know. Hopefully it's growing bigger. I love this plant so much. It's definitely one of my favorites. My Calathea is actually doing very well considering I was away for so long and I couldn't give it regular watering. It already had these sort of like brown crispy bits in it. So I'm not like worried about that. I should probably trim them off though. They don't need these leaves and it might make it look slightly better, but it is doing well considering hopefully come like springtime, I can get it to start growing more again and maybe fill out because that would be amazing. My glorious that I chopped ages ago, oh, come on. Look, it's putting out new growth, which is super exciting. And this is like proper attached to the pole. So hopefully it's rooting really, really well in there. And one day if I have to chop and prop it again, I can do so, or I can extend the moss pole. But it's just like such a huge, beautiful plant that I absolutely love. My Cebu Blue is growing again. For a while it just kind of stopped. And I'm not exactly sure why I think I put it back here to be closer to the grow light that's right here, the mother grow light. Um, I have a discount code for that if you want those, they're amazing grow lights. But since I put it in front of this grow light like quite intensely, like it is very close there, maybe 20, 30 centimeters, it has 
perked up again and started actually growing because for a while it was just stuck there which was kind of odd and I'm hoping that I can get it to grow bigger leaves as well it looks like they're getting bigger again which would be awesome because they did like I said get smaller for a while so hopefully that works out and I can have a nice big beautiful Cebu blue and maybe get it to grow fenestrations one day I would love 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 to try and get a mature plant of Cebu blue and I'm working on it it's just gonna take a while I think these guys over here are absolutely fine nothing really to worry about nothing that exciting going on with them I need to seriously rehydrate these moss poles they do have cups and they did get watered while I was away but not nearly enough so hopefully I can get them in the shower today or this weekend or something and get them nice and moist again. Um, something that was really, really exciting that I noticed when I came back as well is that my little Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, has put out a new leaf. Look at it. Look how freaking cute that is. It is absolutely adorable. I think it's my first new leaf on this plant. I think it's the only new leaf on this plant. Yeah, you can tell because it's like much lighter in color. So that is super exciting and I hope that means that it is happy and healthy here. I should probably, I might change out the soil to something different because it's just the soil it came in. And I think it's probably mostly quar in there. I don't know if you can see that. Looks like mostly quar. So I might change it out a little bit to something else, but I mean, I'm just really excited about it. I'm glad it's happy. Everything else here seems to be doing fine, nothing that special. Oh, tons of roots on my Parezo Verde in there. I should probably put this back into the mother plant and maybe join all of my Parezos together because I have this one, my big one, and my small one. If I put them all together in one, then I have just one plant, which I think I would prefer. These guys are the top of my Monstera Standeliana that I cut, and it looks like they are still growing, which is awesome. I don't know if they've rooted. It doesn't like look like it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Some roots in there. Oh my goodness. That's exciting. That's really, really good. Hopefully I can pot these up semi soonish. Definitely by early spring, early summertime, I can do that and put those back in, make a fuller plant. I've also really enjoyed seeing how much this plant, the Snow Queen, is going towards the light at the minute because for a while it was very upright and normal and you can really see that it's super facing the cabinet now because it's getting grow light from that almost all day, which is awesome. I mean all day, like 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So it's obviously really, really liking that and producing some beautiful variegated growth in there. So I'm very, very happy with that. My freaking variegated string of hearts is back down here again. I swear I only just cut this like not that long ago. So I'm gonna need to chop and prop it again. Maybe get another pot of hummus and do the hummus pot method. These are probably actually ready to go in as well. The non variegated ones back into there. But yeah, it's just gotten so long. It's getting to like Cleo access length and she likes playing with strings. So I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to get some of these, which is not ideal. And then we get to the cabinet, which is probably the most stressful part of this entire video. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to show you the stress today, cause I've been killing them as much as I can, as I can, but Basically, I found a bunch of thrips in here and it stresses me out. It's a sort of thrips outbreak I have never, ever, 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 ever had before, which is super kind of stressful for me. And I'm like, I don't know how to solve this problem anymore. So the first ones I noticed them on was this Splendid. You can tell this is not a happy camper and I'm pretty positive it's just the thrips that caused the issue. Like, I don't know if it's gonna pick it up properly. If not, I'll put some phone footage in, but like you can really see there's just tons of damage on a lot of these leaves. And so I saw that and I was like, okay, something is wrong. And then I found tons and tons and tons of adult thrips on this plant, which is super duper 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 unlike like thrips for me personally. Like all of my previous thrip outbreaks have been all with like mostly larvae. I have 
rarely, I rarely, rarely see more than one or two adult thrips on my plants. And then this is the first time I've had an infestation of adult thrips, which I just don't understand. Is this what people normally get as thrips? Because I only ever really got the babies, and so I was like, oh, they're, they're easy enough to deal with. I've dealt with them so well in the past, and I've been able to get rid of them with predatory mites and stuff, because predatory mites eat the, like, larvae and the eggs and stuff, but they don't eat adults. So I was like, what do I do? Because I don't really, I don't really fancy spraying my entire cabinet with Provanto, because I'm trying to be a bit more natural in my like pest prevention and like curation. So I did get some predatory bugs, like not mites, bugs, that eat adult thrips. They're a bit on the expensive side, unfortunately, and they haven't come yet. So hopefully they'll come in the next week or so and I can get these in there. For now, I've put a bunch of predatory mite sachets in because I have my subscription of them and hopefully those will kill off the eggs and the larvae and kind of break the cycle a little bit. But I've just never seen so many adult thrips and it's like really confused me because it's so not what I've experienced previously. So let's look at what else is going on in here. The main bit is the thrips, but there's some good stuff in here too. So yeah, <laughs> let's go. So the Splendid was sitting right up there, which is fine normally. And I, it was fine before I left, but I, it was really, really weird because I started to see thrips on things like my syndapsis which i have never ever 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 had any thrips on my syndapsis but there were adult thrips on it i think because these leaves are a little bit like tougher they're thicker leaves the thrips don't like them as much as they like philodendron leaves or syngonium leaves or whatever so i was like really really confused i saw some on my jade satin as well i'm pretty sure my milano chrysum has them like look at all that damage in there Oh, it's just like, I know this plant is not happy. I should probably take this out. I don't even want this Melanocrysum anymore, especially now that it has thrips. So really, really annoying. And I hope it hasn't transferred to more things. Positive note though is my um, Obovata has grown this leaf since I left, which is super exciting. It looks a little bit sun bleached, like too green i wish they were darker so maybe i'll pull it out of the light it's quite close up to the light and i think it could probably handle darker but i mean it's kind of cute with the little like pink splotches in it look at those cute little pink splotches so i think i prefer it to be dark green with white splotches with this one because i think i like that a little bit better for it but it's fine my warroquianum has still done absolutely nothing i don't know if, if it ever will but it just is doing nothing oh my goodness oh my goodness look how look how oh my holy cow do you see that look how long that is oh my gosh okay so this is my linearis and it was definitely not this long when i left that is so exciting maybe i need to move it up higher we i might need to take it out of the cabinet soon look at that or drop and prop it because i'm pretty sure they were all like this length when I left and now like what that is so exciting I didn't even notice that until just right now that is cool okay um my glorious top cutting is also putting out a new leaf it does look a little bit smaller but I'm not surprised as it was taken or was growing out since I had took this off so it might not be getting the nutrients as normal but otherwise it is fine i think my um dubia is starting to shingle a little bit but it's also lost its variegation so i'm not sure if it's healthy or not oh i've got some little alocasia leaves back there as well if it wants to focus nope it doesn't want to focus on them but they're there you can see them there we go um one there and then one growing in as well so obviously it's happy new leaves on my discoria too like those ones very good and then probably the most exciting thing of this entire video look at that this is my regal and when i left it hadn't even sprouted a new leaf from the caterpillar. and when i came back it is this beautiful thing 
Oh my god, okay, so you can see bugs in there, but those I am pretty sure are springtails. I had tons and tons and tons of springtails on this plant. Let me see if I can capture some at the bottom. Yeah, see the white bugs? Those are springtails, nothing to worry about at all. And so I'm just so excited about this leaf. I'm so glad that this plant didn't die. I was genuinely really worried about it when I had to chop it up and I saw loads of springtails on it. I was worried that it was rotting and no good, but oh, that is just something special in there. I cannot wait to see how this leaf grows. Y'all will be definitely updated on it because oh my goodness I am so excited about it. Up top it is quite jam-packed. I, I think things have grown since I left. I, I, I genuinely can't tell but there was also thrips up here and that stressed me out massively. I think there was just adult thrips in this entire cabinet and so it is less than ideal. I have something on the way, we'll find out. But I'm kind of glad that it's confined to the cabinet. I haven't noticed anything on any of those plants. So I'm not too, too worried. But as you can see, I've got tons of the predatory mite sachets to hopefully kill the eggs and larvae. For the most part, things in here are growing really well. Like, oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, that's a runner. Okay, I need to take this out. This is my Hoya parasitica and wrap that runner around the trellis it's on. I don't know why it just didn't do that on its own, but it didn't. My fern leaf cactus back there is, I mean, it hasn't died yet, so I think that must mean it's rooting. It feels like quite sturdy in the pot, so I think it probably is. I'm not gonna pull it out right now just because it's kind of way back there and I need to pull out so much more stuff to, to do that, but it looks like it's a healthy one, which is really good. The Silta Pecan I have at the back there, kind of hiding behind some stuff, that has massively been infected with thrips. I think because the leaves are so thin, they just are everywhere, which is so annoying. And I even saw some on the Platinum, unfortunately. So I don't know, I think, oh gosh, look, at there's just some like really dead stuff back there. Um, unfortunately. Thanks, Thrips. This is the, um, Majestic. So, yeah, it's just a problem that I'm gonna need to deal with, unfortunately. Ooh! Okay, that's exciting. My Syndapsis is putting out a new leaf, which is super exciting. I, I feel like I need to move that because it's not in the ideal position. But yeah, just, I think, lots of really good new growth in here, but also a lot of stress from thrips, which is really, really frustrating. And it's a problem, like I said, that I've never ever encountered thrips like this before. And so I'm very nervous to try and save things, but I hope it'll be okay. I think I can make it work. I mean, last resort, I can always provanto, but hopefully with the predatory insects, I can make it work. I'll definitely share with you when I get them because I'm so nervous about it. So up here, things are looking pretty okay for the most part until you get to over there. These ones, though they are a little bit thirsty, which is to be expected, they are absolutely fine. I think that's why I like having these plants, especially above the bed, but in my bedroom in general. This isn't a place where I want to come to care for tons of plants. I tend to put my more high need plants elsewhere. And it just makes caring for these ones a lot easier. They're just a lot more low maintenance, and so I'm really never worried about them. Though a couple on this side are looking a little bit funky. I think it's just some sad leaves on this green syngonium, which I wanted to get rid of anybody, anybody, anyway. Um, I think that's old damage from thrips. And then on my Aglinium white lance, it's gone like super yellow at the bottom. I think it's just dehydration or underwatering, but I'm not totally sure. I'll just prune those off when I get the chance. I've kind of been putting it off the last couple of days, but um, it's okay. Otherwise, I mean, things are doing really well. My string of turtles, my string of spades, both very, very happy. The Hoya up there, happy as always. And like, Genuinely, this stuff I'm really never worried about. 
Of course, my Refutifora is doing amazingly. Like, I, this plant could grow in any conditions. It is like such an easy grower for me. I still can't believe that this time last year it was down there. And now it's all the way at the ceiling. So I, I need to do something soon or extend the moss pole or something because it's very, very much so like getting crammed into that corner, which is totally fine. My Philodendron Cobra Monstera Staniliana hasn't grown at all since I chopped it. I know they are fairly slow. Oh, maybe there's a little bit of new growth in there. Look at that. That's actually really exciting. I know they're like really slow sometimes to get back into things, so that's normal. I do need to water these moss poles, give them a good soaking. They only got watered, I think, once while I was away, and now it's just with the cups. And so they definitely need a proper soaking, and the plant's dusty as well. So giving it a proper shower will be good, rehydrating all of the poles, and hopefully getting them to a point where they can just be watered with the cups again will be brilliant. That is like my ideal, because then I can do it much easier. Because lugging this plant to and from the bathroom is a freaking mission. So I want to do avoid doing that as much as possible. So if I can keep the pole hydrated with the cup, that is so much better. My cacti and succulents seem to be doing very well. Aside from the Senecio angel wing, this one was having problems before I left and I kind of put it in pond as a, like a last stitch effort. Is it last stitch or last ditch? Last stitch effort? And to be honest, I don't think it's going to work. It just looks very dry. It's, it's a shame though, because it's such a beautiful plant. It's so white, it's literally like as white as my walls and so soft, so I would love to maybe try this one again with a more established, healthier plant, but for now, it is what it is. Otherwise, things are fine up here. Nothing really to worry about. And, like, I mean, this is a bit thirsty. It's probably time to water these again. I think I watered the ones in Pawn, or Semi Hydro, I think mid-December, so now that it's March, or maybe it was mid-January. Either way, it's been a minute, so it's time to give these a water again, and I will do that soon. I found it so, so easy caring for these ones in pond. They're so easy. I see why people like cacti and succulents now, because they're just easy peasy. Not much is going on over here. I need to remove these Hoyas and the ones from this side up there back to um, above my window, because that's where I prefer them. They're a bit crowded here, but I just didn't want to make things too complicated for Joe's dad when we were away, because he was looking after Cleo. Everything lo is looking fine. It looks like my ZZ is starting to pop something out there, which is super exciting. This one hasn't popped anything out. Oh, there's another one down there as well. Down there. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. That's so exciting. So I think it is probably liking being in a little bit more of a grow light situation. Those ZC plants are low light plants. They mostly tolerate the low light. They'll definitely prefer something like bright and direct instead. So I think being under the grow light is probably a bit good for it. So hopefully it enjoys that and those come out soon and I'm really excited to show you them. But otherwise, it's just, it's just a bit crowded. I hate when things get too crowded over here. It makes me feel claustrophobic. My Marble Queen is still struggling. It's been struggling since like Christmas time, I think. Like it just is getting so many yellow leaves. I think I just need to take it down and kind of give it a makeover. I need to make over this whole corner. I have plans for it and it'll hopefully happen sometime this month, but I need to like rehab this plant because it's obviously not happy. There's so much bare space. I've lost so many leaves from it. And so I think it's just time to give it a little bit of a different situation and hopefully get it growing big and beautiful again because I really love Marble Queen leaves. They're just not very happy at this moment. And then aside from being quite thirsty, you can see my sand pothos is well curled up there. This one gets thirsty so quickly. I think I need to change its soil or something to something slightly more well draining. But things are doing really well here. My Gloriosum! This leaf popped out while I was gone, and I think it's about the same size as the previous leaf, but it's not hardened off yet, so I'm very excited to see how it grows and if it gets bigger. Like, I'm getting quite close to the end down here. The end of the pot. I'll take that off, I guess. Who needs a catafil? Um, 
but I'm getting quite close to the end of the pot so I don't know what I'm gonna do when that happens I guess I'm gonna probably have to chop and prop it and then not sure what I would do with the small stuff but it's exciting and I love this plant and I'm glad it is growing very well for me still I moved my variegated sodoroy up here for while I was gone because I didn't want it to be on the bedside table and it's still not touching anything you can see it's not touching anything and it looks like it's popped on a new leaf up there so that's I guess exciting I still don't know what I want to do with it because I don't know if it's sick or not and I don't know how to find out unless I like pay for a test but I don't even know which test I would need to pay for so I, I don't know what to what to do about it it's just gonna sit here and I'm gonna keep semi caring for it until it dies probably or it grows really really well and then I assume it's not sick anymore so who knows so moving into the office everything is looking pretty okay I mean there's nothing that's jumping out at me being like oh my god this is terrible so I guess let's just go through it the most exciting thing is holy freaking cow this is my alocasia fry deck that i cut look at those roots do you see all of them is that not insane oh my goodness i'm so freaking excited about that i'm so glad it's rooted i could probably pot this up at this point in some pond put it back into the pot so it's like a little bit of a chiller plant or maybe start over i'm not too sure what i want to do with it but i am just so so pleased that it has rooted and not rotted at all so that is super duper exciting everything else up here on top of the cabinet is doing pretty average nothing all that special staghorn fern is fine alocasia at the back is fine i'm pretty sure this code 696 leaf came out since i was gone which is pretty exciting and it looks like there might be another one on the way i am not sure in fact i don't think that clara ended up watering the moss poles i mean that's totally fair it's kind of a big job to water all of the i feel like i've got like 30 moss poles at this point so it's okay that they haven't been watered but i'm gonna need to do a massive like watering session with all of them going forward just to make sure that they're nice and rehydrated but nothing really that fancy is going on with the rest of these. I guess moving back here, I'm surprised. I'm so, still so surprised that this begonia is doing so well. This is the Arabia sunset, I believe. And it's just living its best life in pond. I need to give it a bit of a water. I think the main bit is that I just need to water things. I still need to pot up these, the purple passion plant and I think this is either a peperomia or a decidia or something but yeah i just need to like pot stuff up where where whoa, 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 whoa. where's where's what i must have done something with it okay sorry my brain is just blanked out i must have done something with my cloche here that had my variegated heart leaf in it which I mean, seems to be doing okay. It doesn't look like it's having any problems, but I don't know. I, I just remember it being inside of a cloche and now it's not. So I'm a little bit confused there. I must have done something before I left with it because I know Claire wouldn't have just like gotten rid of a cloche. Like that doesn't make any sense. But the Adarapoense dark form, I think this is, that was behind it is putting out a new leaf. And I think I need to like hydrate it a little bit more and get it a little bit more, um, what do I call it, humid, so I can get this out safely because I do want it to come out safely. That would be amazing. But its previous leaf, come over here, is doing pretty well. Again, it's a bit dark. Sorry about that. It's just because the lighting's a bit odd here. Otherwise, things are doing really, really well on that shelf. At the back there, that's exciting. So that is my green Maranta that I totally neglected and ended up chopping back to nothing, which is completely normal. I've done that a few times with this one actually now, and it is now properly putting out some new growth, which is really exciting. I'm really glad to see that it's not just offed itself completely, 
after I neglected it and didn't give it water for like ages. I mean, I think the main thing is that things are just going to need a decent watering because it's been like a week and a half since Claire came by. And so I want to make sure that things are nice and hydrated again. My little Rafidophora from Claire actually has put out a new leaf. I'm excited to see how this one grows because it grows so differently from mine. But otherwise, again, things are doing really, really well. The most exciting thing up top, which you will have seen if you watched my houseplant tour video, is that my big Albo Monstera, so sorry if you can hear Cleo running around, she's having a bit of a zoomy moment, but my big Monstera Albo put out this new leaf, which is super exciting since I've been gone. I think it had this one in my tour video, but now it's got this one as well. It's not fenestrated nor variegated at all. So I don't know if it's just not got the right genes for it, but this leaf is pretty decently variegated. So I'm not too sure. I'm not mad at it. I still think this leaf is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm happy with this plant, maybe until this leaf goes away. It looks like my Florida ghost prop that I have here put out this leaf, but it's stuck inside the catafil. Oh gosh, have I just broken it? Okay, let me let me get it out really quick. Okay, so I got the catafil off. Luckily, it doesn't look like the leaf is broken, but it's very spirally in there. So hopefully now that it's out, I can let it open okay. I might need to put like a damp towel on it just to make sure that it opens properly properly, but it is a very white leaf. And I know this one has like amazing genes because these are the previous leaves on it, though this one is kind of fully white so I'm not sure what this one will be when it hardens off. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. My Anthurium forgettii, white stripe up here, has an inflorescence if I can get to it. Claire said it was receptive when she was here, but because I don't have any pollen, it didn't, like, I couldn't do anything with it. I think it might be at the pollen stage now, so if I can, I'll collect it, but I'm not sure. I definitely don't think this plant is kind of mature enough to receive pollen. It's only got two leaves, so I don't really want to press it too, too much, but my other anthurium, my crystallinum, this one over here, I'm pretty sure I talked about trying to pollinate this inflorescence, if I can get it to focus, like in my December favorites video. So it's been like two months now and it hasn't died away. So I, I might have been pollinated. I am not too sure. It doesn't look like it's like swelling or anything, but it's also not died off. So I feel like it's a positive sign. It also hasn't really gone into the male stage at all. So I'm just hoping that it has been pollinated because that would be really cool. This plant is definitely mature enough to have like pollination. It's got so many leaves. I just can't wait for another new big leaf to come in like this one. It doesn't look like there's anything new in there. But hopefully at some point, also sorry if you can hear Cleo drinking water because that's what she's doing right now. This beautiful new leaf has popped out on my big sport variegated Monstera that I'm pretty sure is a large form, but I'm not too sure. I was a bit worried because the previous leaf came out without any secondary fenestrations, but the new one has secondary fenestrations and what looks like a little bit of variegation in its leaves as well. So I'm hoping that this was just a bit of a fluke and it'll kind of bounce back. It has some really big leaves down at the bottom with like lots of holes. So if I can get it to properly root into this moss pole, which I think it has, it feels like it has, then I can, oh yeah, you can see that this, this root is like in and then out again, <laughs> just because monster roots are insane, but it will hopefully start growing bigger and bigger. I just need to, I guess, put an extension on that moss pole fairly soon and keep it hydrated. And also, I'm pretty sure this one had thrips before I left, but I prevented it just to make sure that it would be okay. And it doesn't look like there's any thrips damage on the new leaf at all. I've had, I've given it a good inspection and it looks pretty okay. So hopefully they're gone. I am gonna keep it in isolation a little bit longer just to make sure, like double, triple check. 
but for now, I think it is completely okay. Inside of the Rudsta cabinet, I think for the most part things are doing okay. My, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, Alocasia, um, Francofolia, sorry, my brain has not turned back on yet. I'm a bit jet lagged. It is kind of struggling, like this leaf is not a happy camper in here. It does have this new leaf, which I think was just unfurling before I left. So it's not got zero leaves, but it does only have one. So I'm really not sure what I'm doing wrong with this one. Maybe I'm just not watering it enough. Like it tends to dry out faster. Maybe I need to put it in a proper self-watering pot and give it a bit more fertilizer because I find that alocasias do like a lot more fertilizer than I would think. I'm also really, really glad to see that my snake scale is still alive. I was quite worried about this one not being the happiest. It was going a tiny bit yellow before I left, but it looks like it's still popping out new leaves. And even though the moss is dry, it seems to be okay. So hopefully we'll get back to the shingling at some point. I might just have to wait a little bit longer because I have let it dry out a little bit too much in this time. But I mean, it is what it is and hopefully hopefully in time it will grow nice and shingly again i've got my fingers crossed for it i'm just glad it didn't die during this time to be honest because that was my greatest concern of these highlight plants at the top nothing really has changed that much except for my polyneura so i'm pretty sure before i left it only had four leaves but it is freaking vining so there's two leaves there on one of the cuttings and two leaves there on the other set of cuttings and they look i can't tell if they're super highly variegated or a little bit unhappy right now so we're just gonna have to wait and see but i am just like very very glad that it's growing because this is another one that i was like a little bit concerned about i knew that because it has a small pot they dry out a lot faster and maybe that's why the leaves are looking a bit funky at the minute because it's thirsty. Yeah, it definitely feels thirsty. You can do like the taco test and there's like no, I think it's called turgidity or rigidity. There's no rigidity in, rigidity in there. And so I need to give it a thorough water, just like I need to give everything else a water. But I feel like these plants, especially the ones in the small pots that need more water more frequently just because they have less soil to like hold it all which is completely fine but just gotta make sure that i give them all a good soaking so yeah so yeah that is it that is everything going on in my collection right now I definitely have a lot of work to do so maybe a plant tours video is in order I'll bring you with me as i take care of the mess that is this thing right now I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I'm like so beyond annoyed about the thrips. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> For the most part, nothing died, which is really what matters the most. <laughs> Before I head off to go do plant chores, <laughs> um, I wanted to give a big thank you to my new patrons that I got while I was away. So thank you so, so much to Inga, Claire Sarah, and Megan. Thanks for joining the Good Growing Fam. I really hope you enjoy it. If any of the rest of you who aren't on my Patreon want to join in, we do a bunch of cool stuff over there and it's only three pounds a month. So you can think of it as um, buying me a coffee or running one of my grow lights for a month in my home, keeping my plants alive. So let me know if you want. The link is in the description. Of course, absolutely no pressure. It's there if you want it. And if you don't, that's fine as well. My content here doesn't change. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for joining and thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Gosh, I'm a little bit rusty. <laughs> what is this? But yeah, thanks all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up down below. Um, comment any other things you'd like me to talk about plant-wise. Please give me advice for adult thrips. All advice will be appreciated because I've genuinely never had an outbreak like this. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay. Um, but yeah, also subscribe for more if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!